So today was today was for us. It's our third day in a row in the mini camp. Guys have worked really hard these first two days. Um, we got a really good seven on seven period in before we got to our, our situational walkthrough. And so what you saw today was uh, a very specific set of, of points in the game um, that come up, you know, sometimes once a year, sometimes a couple times a year, sometimes maybe once every five years. Um, and so you're just making sure that, that we're on top of those um, situational components of the game and the time and the clock. Uh, both offensively and defensively. And so that's what that last kind of half hour-ish of practice was, was um, a very choreographed, specific set of uh, situations that come up. So first time we've got a chance to do that, we're sort of at the very end of our uh, installs on both sides of the ball. And so that's sort of the last thing that we hit is um, this situational work where uh, you're working against now all the different things that come up in those spots. And as I told the team this morning, that's, you know, the, you win the games in the NFL on the margins, and, and that's a – those are – winning and game losing game winning plays that they have to be able to make um, and be able to be prepared for the situation aware of the situation you got to execute in a moment so that's what that was today uh, really nice job by those guys but um, offensively we bounced back from a uh, not great day yesterday in seven on seven in the red zone defense kind of kicked our teeth in and then um, today they came out with some good energy and our first set of seven on seven was much better so uh, good to see that you know, you see the ball go a certain place. Sometimes it looks like it's maybe in a double coverage situation. Is that something that you that you're challenging your your quarterbacks and receivers to make those tight window throws, or is that yeah. more of look around when you watch the film and see if there was somewhere else you could have gone? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, seven on seven to me has always been a, a bit of an experimental period for quarterbacks. It's you know, there's no consequence, and sometimes you use the, those. Um, those reps uh, to find out what you can get away with. You know, we, I, I encourage those quarterbacks to maybe not necessarily check the ball down every time in seven on seven. Um, test your throws. Test test the throw into a tight coverage. Test test it into a tight window, uh, and then we can coach off the decision making. But sometimes uh, there is a place for a, a little bit of experimentation and trying to see what you can and can't get away with uh, in a, in a live motion period. Um, so yeah, there's, they're allowed to have some freedom to, to try some throws and we coach off of it and you can say, look, we know that you'd probably get to the back here in a real game or you check the ball down here, but we don't mind an aggressive approach sometimes in seven on seven. Of something like that, do you ever separate the scheme from the quarterback and say, well, this play worked, we yeah. go to the right place or the throw yeah. wasn't good? There, it, there's, it's, it's all, there's a lot of layers to the coaching part of it um, when it comes to plays and players and when you're trying to evaluate, one, the scheme of the play and then, two, the decision-making of the quarterback. Receivers have decisions they make on choice routes and option routes, and so uh, you try to keep the process goal there with – what you're trying to get done schematically and then decision making wise by the players and so it's it's sort of twofold their seven on sevens can be really educational periods um you know there's no pass rush there's not a lot of cost um so we were able to, to do some things that you wouldn't normally do over the course of a game both decision making wise and schematically that maybe we wouldn't do yes than the players at this point uh no i wouldn't say that i think these guys have done a really nice job we we had a, a, a challenging day in the red zone versus uh, Denard's defense yesterday. Those guys do a really good job. I've, I've always uh, disliked playing against Baltimore's red zone defense. Um, and so it was, it was challenging. So we had, we had some moments that weren't as good as they need to be. And then uh, we came back today with, with a much better, um, much better energy and approach to the seven on seven period. So I wouldn't say it has, there's any separation between the two. I'm really happy with where those guys are at. Do you actually spend in the film room breaking down like an OTA practice or seven on seven? Like, is this a full regular season film period, or is it just kind of? Uh, well, we get a little bit more time because we're in a mandatory mini camp, um, but our days are capped. Um, so we still, you know, an OTA period. I think we only get six hours a day, so we have to fit that time in. Um, and so it's not like a training camp day in a sense. You get ten hours to, to go all day, but uh, we make sure we watch everything that we do. Uh, we have plenty of time to get it done. We'll have a, we have a meeting this afternoon to wrap up the practice, and then. The next day is next morning is usually your install meeting, getting ready for practice. So um, plenty of time to get all that stuff cleaned up. We watch every snap that we have. In terms of Will's pass, I know you've talked a lot about maybe tweaking the base a little bit. Do you sort of have to take that into account also, you know, as you're watching practices, that he's, that he's maybe changing some new things, and as a result, everything might not be quite as good as you like right yeah. now, and that it might be getting better. Sure. There's there's a, you know, whenever, you're, whenever guys are working on things and, like I said, we encourage guys to try different stuff. And, and Will's not the only one that, that is working with techniques. Some of those linemen are doing a bunch of new techniques, and so you see them trying things. Uh, we encourage guys to try that stuff. 
um, as they're trying something new. And if it doesn't look great or they don't feel comfortable after a, a period of time, then uh, we don't force a technique on them. And so for some reason, uh, Will didn't feel comfortable with what we were teaching. He let us know, and we'd, we'd go back to whatever he felt better with. So, uh, But there hasn't been any reason to do that at this point. But certainly it's a, it's a trial period. It's a trial and error on some of these things that what guys feel comfortable with. You see from Mason and Malik behind Will, and, and how do you go about trying to decide how much work to give each of those guys? Not only now, but moving forward. Yeah, I mean, they're, it's a it's a competition. You know, they're going to both get a fair shake at, at the two job, and um, th- we're both up front uh, with both those guys telling them that's how it's going to work. So they'll split reps pretty evenly. Um, they'll get a chance to play quite a bit in the preseason. Um, that's usually where it separates is, is the game action when you're really getting the evaluation. But happy with where both of those guys are at. Um, you know, just like any competition, there's going to be ups and downs. There'll be days when you guys come out and one looks better than the other. And, and the, the evaluation is a totality of all their time uh, in the offseason, in training camp, and in the preseason games. And so it's an ongoing evaluation, and there's going to be ebbs and flows, and guys will look good one day and not as good the other. And so uh, you're trying to get their totality of work. Uh, as to who's best equipped to be the number two. Uneducated eye, obviously, but it looks like Malik, his base is, is way wider mm-hmm. than the other two. Is, is he working on something there? No, he's not working. He's uh, he's actually one of the more n- natural uh, footwork and base guys. Just it's, it comes very easy to him. Um, I wouldn't I wouldn't say he's overly wide. Nothing that would be problematic to my eye at this point. Um, you know, I think that he's had a couple really good days and he's had some throws that he'd like to have back, I think, at this point. Um, but so that's that's the whole process. And it's it's new for all these guys. It's a new system, a new way of doing things. And so there's going to be ups and downs. And um, there'll be days where, where guys excel and days where guys might struggle. So, um, you know, sort of a, a, it's a marathon for us at this point to, to make sure where we need to be by September. Last year, there were times that Will, it seemed like he would maybe pull the trigger a hair late and make up for it with just how fast he can get the ball there. Sure. Have you guys been working through the timing? That's also a mental thing, I'm sure, but where do you see him in terms of progressing there? Yeah, doing a good job. There's there's some timing things, like, for example, yesterday in the red zone, you know, it might have been, like, the first or second time he might have repped a particular play. So it's, it's all very new. Uh, and he might, and he was, he was probably late on, on two or three throws down there on some new concepts that he hadn't banked the reps on. And so the, the hope is that, you point it out the first time and, and you say, this is the timing he needs to be on. He sees where the window is uh, at when the window is open. Um, and then you keep working on that and you keep pushing that timing because everything about how you play football in the NFL at the quarterback spot uh, in the drop back game is, is very, very heavily timing based and your feet got to be right. Uh, the processing of what you see has to happen fast and then you got to trust what you see uh, when you make the throw. It's you know the old adage, a lot of quarterbacks try to wait to see guys come open and um, you're trying to anticipate when they're going to be open and that's, that's a, a maturation process for a quarterback. And so um, the fun part is like there's, he, he sees it and he understands it when it's not exactly right and then he usually makes an adjustment the next time out. And so you take a, a red zone play, for example, the first day he runs it, maybe it's not great and the timing's not where you want it to be and then you know, we've repped it four, five, six more times before the season starts, and now you start to feel uh, that timing, and he starts to feel it and see it. Um, it's a it's a rep thing. It's a it's an experience process, and so um, that part's fun. I mean, that's the that's the coaching part for me. That's where I enjoy. So I guess Stone, you talk about Stonehouse being in the building every day. Mm-hmm. You talked about that when we first got here. With him, is it now just trying to be patient? Or are you optimistic about him? Looking way down the road, or is it still too early? Yeah, to it's too early to tell. I mean, the injury is obviously significant enough to, you know, to where he's still out at this point. Um, he is rehabbing. He's doing a great job in his rehab process. Uh, we'll see where we get to when we report to training camp on where that's at. Um, his progress has been really good. Um, you guys have seen him kind of out walking around a little bit. Um, he has been working, and you know, it's going to be a matter of when the doctors clear it. Uh, when you get to training camp and then when he feels confident enough. And I've been with enough guys that have done knee injuries where uh, there's also a mental factor uh, in, the, in the return is the, the confidence backed in, in the injury. Sometimes it takes, even though they're medically fine and cleared, you got to work through the, uh, the mental part of knowing that you're fine. Uh, I've seen a lot of guys have to take some time to get through that process too. So we'll see where he's at in training camp. Um, I think that's probably the best way to put it. He's like, would you ever um, potentially with your, you know, uh, brand new drafted rookie run like a tackle screen, you know, utilize his speed and space, ability and space? Do you want to give everything away now? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, JC. <laughs> Quickly, uh, you, you've had some coaches come in for the yep. Bill Walsh Fellowship Program. How important is it to, for that program and how important is it for you to have those, that help here? It's a great, it's a, it's a fantastic program. You know, I've, I've come across multiple guys over, over my time in the league that, that have 
in a, in a sense, graduated from that program where they've, they've made impressions, they've, they've made relationships, and has given them opportunities to get jobs in the NFL, which is ultimately what it's for, is exposing guys uh, to the NFL, to the way of, of our coaching processing, uh, and then a chance to get to meet people. You know, it's, it's a networking and relationship business too, and so uh, let those guys meet people. Obviously, Clint McMillan was a guy that was in the Bill Walsh uh, fellowship program and, and ended up getting hired from it. So, um, they're great opportunities. Uh, we, they're competitive jobs to get now. I mean, these 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 internships. Um, you know, we'll, we'll have hundreds of applicants trying to get a chance to come in here, and so they're they're very competitive. Um, and the guys that we bring in, we feel like can one help us for the time they're here, and two that um, they got futures as as really bright coaches in the NFL. So uh, it's great to have those guys. Is it hard? Speaking of, of JC, is it hard to, to kind of get a gauge of how well that transition's going when you're not wearing pads and so forth, or the things you can. Pick up. There's things you can pick up, you know. I think there's a there's a movement, a movement, and a mental component that you feel like as you watch it that feels good. Um, does he know what to do, where to go? Those things are the first things, and then uh, you see the techniques start to come along. And everything I've seen so far has been really pretty dang good for a guy making that transition um, for the first time playing the left side in a while. And um, you know, again, a lot more will be revealed as we get going, but everything would indicate so far that that he's up to the task. There's been. Um, you know, there's not anything that would have been alarming at this point that he couldn't make the transition. And so, so far, everything's been about what you would hope it would be. Um, I mean, so, you know, I think one thing that a lot of college, especially high school as well, don't really understand is how to practice without pads. And that's something I had to learn how to do. You know, um, being in college, you were really just working on the first two steps. Um, but here you see a lot of guys, you know, working hands, refits. And then especially like I know one time yesterday I got beat, I overset and he took the angle inside um, in, col in college or high school. You're not really guys aren't really doing all that. But in the league, you know, if you have bad technique there, they're not going to do too much, but they're going to take what they see and they're going to go inside on you. So, um, yeah, I mean, that's definitely something that, you know, you got to got to know how to make that adjustment to. Um, but yeah, just making the transition from right to left. I mean, you're still you're, you're learning everything, a whole different style of technique from a legendary coach. So just day by day, you just take it with a grain of salt, just how to get better every single uh, aspect of the game. We've heard from a couple of people now that they're having to kind of drag you off the practice field at times. You're out here getting individual work. Is that something, is that the way that you've operated for yeah. a while now? Or is that uh, you're trying to up the work ethic? What's the deal there? Yeah, um, I think it was, I was in 10th grade when, or 11th grade uh, when they moved me from right to left and it was like, I mean not right to left, when they moved from um, D-line to O-line and I was a top top 10 defensive player in the country, you know, but we just lost um, three linemen to a crazy incident, you know, um, two of them tore their ACL, one MCL playing basketball, it was insane. So they moved me and Tyler Booker um, to play tackle and we were D-linemen, two top D-linemen in our class at the time. Um, and yeah, I mean, I, I like to compete and I like to win, but obviously I'm playing a whole different position I've never played before at IMG at a high level. So, um, you know, I'm talking to the coach and I'm just working, working with him every single day after practice. And then conveniently, um, I'm watching a video on Kobe Bryant and he's just expressing the fact that, you know, he felt like he kind of arrived in basketball a little bit later. But if, you know, he worked twice or worked out twice a day, you know, then by a year span, he'd get better uh, two years worth of work in one year span. Um, and then, you know, he just, that's what he said he did. So in five years of being in the NBA, he'd have 10 years of work. Uh, so I just kind of took that to, to heart. If I did my work on my own, then outside of the practice, I'll get better twice as fast. So um, since I was in high school, that's something that I've always kind of adopted to always do. Did it in high school, Alabama, and now here. So, JC, um, earlier um, you coming back, um, saw you kind of carrying some, some helmets there. Yeah. <laughs> Talk to me just about that and what that says about. Yeah. Um, to, to be a leader, you got to be able to serve the people that you're, you're, you're around. And especially we're rookies, so, you know, we have rookie duties. And, I mean, I, I love these guys, all the, all the vets, especially they look after us and make sure that, you know, we're on top of our stuff. They're holding us accountable. You know, they're doing what vets should, uh, should do. And, and, you know, I just love them for, love them for that. So, um, you know, when it comes down to, to holding my own, being a rookie and doing what a rookie does, I don't mind, you know, looking after the guys and, you know, letting them, like, hey, I'll carry you guys' helmet, saying, you know, shoulder pads when we get them on. Uh, carry all that stuff in. You guys just, you know, get off the field and get off your feet. So, you said you had a lot of breakfast duty and things like that. Uh, yeah, I mean, we, we bought them all some uh, donuts today. So all the rookies in the old line brought the uh, vest today, some donuts. So, is there part of you that looked forward to that rookie duty? You work all your life to get to the NFL, and you're finally a rookie. And you're kind of to do that. Yeah, of I mean, um, just as an individual, you know, you always love to prove yourself. 
And, you know, a lot of people kind of, um, some people have actually speculated, like, you know, guys who are in my position going to IMG, um, then Alabama being a pick that I was, you know, people say you can be entitled. Um, and I, I kind of just want to work against that narrative in every aspect, um, in every way. You know, the only thing that I really, I really kind of, I guess I'll say, uh, plead the fifth to is when I get water. I allow the trainers to kind of do that for me. But outside of all of that, you know, I want to show them that, you know, no matter what I am or who I am, wherever I'm at in life, I'm always here to serve my guys. Bill Callahan preaches every single day, and I know it's early, but what, 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 what have you maybe learned from him during the early stages? Hands, uh, getting off the ball and, and using your hands right away. I mean, it's, it's first touch. Uh, so it's about, you know, who, who's going to be able to use their hands um, the quickest and who's going to be in good posture. You know, even outside of Coach Callahan, every coach here preaches on uh, posture. You want to be in good position to get the job done and be able to move in space. How do you feel like your relationship with Olga and Bertha has developed over the yeah, uh, I mean, like I said, man, those are my best friends right there. You know, we I love going going um, going against it, and um, just every single day you you look forward to getting the chance to really master your craft with it. So I know it's early on, but what's the relationship with you and Pete, and kind of building that there on that left side? Yeah, that's that's my guy. Uh, he actually reminds me of one of my old teammates, uh, Greg Crippen, who's like, like a brother to me. And uh, when I was drafted, him and uh, Will Levis gave me a call, and um, yeah, I mean, since then, you know, we had a. I think it was a two and a half week span from the day I was drafted to the day I had a report. And I just text him just to get um, advice on what's going on. And every single time he'd always reach back and, you know, uh, provide that leeway. You know, last night I was on the phone with him going over the script for the day. So, you know, we just build that bond to um, make sure, like, when we're out there, you know, we have that chemistry, we can work together. So, you know, I, I, I being a young guy and a rook, um, lean on him to, you know, just just help me out through this process. You know, I, I, no one can do it alone. So having a guy like that, especially a guy of high character like him, I mean, I just have so much respect for him. Well, can you Obviously, you're on the grind. Andre Sweat. Also, I wonder if that, if you've been able to talk to Devondre about, you know, the fact that he's probably, I would guess, a little bit frustrated not being able to. Yeah, I, I called him last night. Um, yeah, I mean, there's obviously a level of frustration. You know, we're all competitors. Uh, we all want to showcase what we are and what we can do. Um, but we just talked about just being patient, um, doing what you have to do, and just letting it heal naturally. You don't want to force force something, um, force yourself to come back and you know end up um, injuring it more. So yeah, we 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 talked and uh, chatted. He knows, you know, every weekend I try to hold something at my house or somebody else is doing something. We all try to go out together and just build that chemistry um, off the field as a as a group, just as a group uh, a team. So. You know, uh, we're always there for one another. So, but yeah, I, I think he'll be he'll be pretty good. I mean, obviously, you're on the grind and everything, working hard. But have you been able to find some time to enjoy the city? If so, what are some spots maybe that you? Oh uh, yeah, me and my girlfriend we went to a, a putt a putt thing. I forget what it was called. Yeah, I think that's what it was called. Yeah, we went there. Um, I won obviously. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, we went over there the other day. Um, and then me, I think our T Sweat DJ. Um, Gabe and um, um, Robert uh, Javier, and it was one other guy, I can't remember um, his name, but we all went to a place, I think it was called 1230 a couple weeks ago, um, and then it happened to be right on Broadway, so we just walked the, the strip to see how it was, so um, it was pretty nice out there. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, we're being a professional, you know, you try to stay off your feet a lot, so, um, like I said, if we have an event as like a team that we do something together, you know, we'll do that together. But more times than not, we're just at, at one another's house and just kicking. Yeah, it. Uh, yeah a couple of people, yeah. Broadway. I mean, it, it was it was crazy. I've been to um, New Orleans, New York, Cali, and all, all of it kind of stands apart. But I think that was the closest thing to kind of um, at New Orleans, the, the Bourbon Street, I think it's called over there. That's the closest thing to that. So, but um, yeah, no, it's nice. Um, Nashville is a, a beautiful city. I love driving around, you know, just exploring it whenever I get the chance to uh, with the guys. So, but yeah, it's a great city. You being a rookie, but you've got such an infectious personality. And we, we obviously saw it with the exchange with Cali yeah. over here. Is it is it different? Did any of the vets ever say, "Hey, how are you this like comfortable right away stepping into the building?" Because that's how it kind yeah. of feels like you've been. Yeah, I mean. No, nah, I mean, everybody in the room, we, we do a lot of positive encouragement. So, you know, it's, it's all the rookies, honestly. Um, we uh, reported here, obviously, earlier than um, the vets for, you know, the camp. And we all just, just bonded right away. We have a great, great group of guys and a great team. So, you know, it all just kind of flows naturally, you know. I mean, we we became a family really quick. And, you know, we just feel, like I said, comfortable with one another. So we can be um, honest and hold each other accountable if, you know, we're not doing something right. And, you know, positive encouragement if we do something um, pretty good. So... What's been the toughest thing about this whole transition so far? What's been the most difficult part of this whole transition? 
Um, that's a good question. Probably, probably, kind of just like the speed and intensity of everything. Um, you know, in the beginning of the year, I was in California playing Michigan. You know, and I'm so used to a college like um, schedule, uh, especially at Alabama. A lot it was kind of a the gridiron of everything. So here, uh, like they said, you know, guys don't want to. This is it's an investment, so you don't want to you don't want to push guys through the ground and you know just get somebody hurt. But you also want to find that sweet spot for uh, people to develop and um, but also stay healthy. So you know, just trying to find that that sweet spot as a professional now and not overloading myself, but also making sure that I'm staying on top of it and getting all the work in. That's that's probably been the toughest thing that I'm trying to still learn. Between that and the time you guys break next week until training camp starts to make sure you're ready to go and, and, and peaking at the right time. You say it one time? Yeah, yeah, what will you do, I guess, from the time you guys break uh, next week until training camp starts to kind of stay in shape and be ready to go? Yeah. Um, yeah, coach, I mean, everybody, even at Alabama, they told you when you're in places like this where you're you're going so uh, so many times, so many days in a row, when you get that that time to get away, they said it's all good to just change the scenery. So a couple of um, the guys on the team, we're probably going to go somewhere, um, you know, just travel maybe for like four to five days. Um, and then after that, I'm just coming right back here to train again. So I'll be here um, probably, the, we, I think we break like the 21st. So I'll probably be back here like, I think like the 24th. Fifth or sixth, and then I'll just train to the training camp. So the tiniest bit of being serious about what you're asking. So yeah, uh, what was the, the tiniest, tiniest bit of being serious when you're asking coach about maybe taking advantage of your? your thing? Um, no, I was not serious at all. We have no intention of using that play. <laughs> uh, so yeah. <laughs> When's the last time you've been th throwing a ball in a game? I'm not gonna lie. So we installed it. We installed it. It's crazy. We started in college or high school with Tyler Booker, actually. And coach wanted me to get the run and the pass. And I told Book to get the run because I felt like I was more finesse if I got the ball in open space. <laughs> so um, we had the run. And y'all can go back to We actually played Ravenwood, a high school in Tennessee. Oh, yeah. And um, yeah, I was the lead blocker. Actually, I missed the block on some dumb stuff. But um, I was the lead blocker. Book actually got the first down by like three yards. But they called it dead like long ago. Um, and then we ended up running my play. And um, I got tackled right away, and I was pretty hurt by that. So, but um, yeah, no. So then we started again in college, and we were finna run it in the spring game with uh, Coach Reese, um, but we just never got to the to the uh, situation to run it. We we're gonna run it when we got like to the twenty or ten yard line, and we we're gonna run it from there. But now we definitely practice it though, so I'm, I'm definitely used to it. Sweat has scored a touchdown. Yeah, he got lucky, but <laughs> I, mean, I, I could score a touchdown if I was in that. See, it wasn't like a run from on the goal line, like one yard away. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. <laughs> huh? No, nah, heck, heck no. <laughs> nah, he wouldn't score. He wouldn't score against us. <laughs> yeah.